So uh, let's get into college football week three. Cue the music. All right, Casey, so let's start off with an interesting game here. Formal rivals back in the 70s. Number I six, Oklahoma. You hate it? I hate it. Number six, Oklahoma heading to Nebraska. Why do you hate it? Okay. One, first game after your coach getting fired. How you don't know how Nebraska is going to come out? Are they going to come out and play for that interim coach? I mean, spread is let's just get into the spread. Oklahoma minus eleven over under sixty six and a half. I mean, I was late earlier today when I was reading a lot of shit. I was all out. Well, oh, so you did some research this week. All four. I've done a lot of research. Our <laughs> sheet is looking a lot better than it did last <laughs> week. <laughs> I blame lack of research then. <laughs> um, Oklahoma. I was Oklahoma minus 11 all day. I I mean, I want to hear your take, but I'm now 50-50. I might go Nebraska plus 11. I can see him keeping it close in this game. How are your – what are you feeling? All right, so a little tidbit. Uh, the interim coach for Nebraska, Mickey something. I can't remember what his last name is. Love he, the name, Mickey. Mickey. Love it. it might as well be Mickey Mouse as far as I'm concerned. But Shut the fuck <laughs> Uh-huh. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> well, just Are like, you good? So he played for Nebraska back in the 90s, and he apparently I heard today that he had quite a moment against Oklahoma back in the day where allegedly he got hurt in the middle of a game, and they kind of did a rallying cry around him. I heard he never played again after that. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I did hear that. I didn't look. I, yeah, I, I didn't look into that part of it. It was one of those, like, I heard it. Right before, honestly, we kind of started recording. I heard it on my way here to record. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if he's going to be able to motivate these boys enough. It does feel like kind of a trap game for Oklahoma. I mean, they didn't look good against Kent State last week. I may have been muted during that two-minute take. Oh, really? Yeah. I looked well, down. I was like, oh, shit, I was muted. I don't well, remember hitting mute. Well, I can I can feed in the audio. Oh, no, there. look, it's fine. It's just me just saying that. Whatever we just said a second. Ago. <laughs> um, no, I was just gonna say. So, I don't know if this is a trap game for Oklahoma. They didn't look great against Kent State, to be honest. Yeah, dude, they they, they won thirty. This thirty twenty four of their thirty three points came in the third quarter. Yeah, that's what I mean. One quarter. So I I don't know. Um, I, my my heart really wants Nebraska to stay within eleven here. Sorry. Come on, dude. I was, thought you were going to keep on talking. I didn't know you were going to come right to me. It's, this is a conversation. We're going back I and forth. I thought you were going to talk more. Honestly. No, I mean, I can definitely see this being a trap game. Because, like, it's one of those I can see Oklahoma coming out slow. I mean, everything I'd rather, like, Oklahoma's offense is at both sides of the ball are clicking. It's like. I didn't see that. Cl- clicking? You didn't see? I no, saw, I, I'm saying, like, I didn't see it. I didn't oh, see that, like, when I when we watch them. I didn't see no, both I sides. No, yeah. I don't. I mean, you, you didn't do shit for the first half against. Kent State a right. back team. I mean, I get Nebraska is not a good football team. They just their defense their is horrible too. But I, rivalry game. I'm gonna ride with you. Let, let's 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 take ne- Nebraska plus eleven. It's gonna be give us a interest. I'm gonna be I, I'm gonna be rooting against Oklahoma anyway. I think at Nebraska, I also saw um, that these were the most expensive tickets. That this was the second most expensive ticket this week after App, App State. So they're going to be sold out. They're going to be ready to go. I, you know what? I I might be going down the same trap like I did with Alabama and Texas. OU minus eleven. Okay. OU minus eleven. Let's go. I love this next game. All right. I love this next game. You say- number twelve BYU heading to number twenty five Oregon. BYU is my football team. BYU is my football team. I went one and zero in bets last week. Well, I went one and one. You them. love BYU. I love BYU. Every time I they play, BYU. every time they play, you're like, I love this game. It's like, no, you just like the team. Every time, well, it's because I'm hot with BYU. I know BYU football. They're just a bunch of old men that play college football. <laughs> they have two kids and a wife. <laughs> After their football game, they go back to their families. <laughs> That's what they do. They don't go out and party like all these rest of these college players do. They go back to their families, and they have a fun time with their two kids and wife. Uh, Oregon, minus three and a half, over, under, set at 58. Are you riding with BYU then? See, it's like, I don't, this, this is a trap game, I feel like. 
I am riding with BYU. I am going money line with BYU. I think they're winning outright. But I can also, and I think Oregon stinks. I think Oregon is absolutely horrible, horrible at football. Bo Nix is your quarterback. He is a horrible, horrible QB. I get he's good at home, but it's one of those things that I am a little nervous because BYU headed down to South Florida for their first game, came back, played a home game at night against B- Baylor, went into double OT. Do they have enough in the tank to beat Oregon? Yeah, I see this as a game of t- like a tale of two sides, right? BYU is looking to prove that they're legit, while Oregon's trying to prove that they're better than the blowout loss to Georgia. Um, another tidbit for you. I'm not sure that BYU is going to have two of their key receivers, uh, yeah, Puka, they... Lacuna, and Gunnar Romney. Uh, they didn't play last week, and I, there hasn't been like a, a yeah, definitive. You don't know if they're playing this week. You haven't heard officially that either they're playing or they're not. I, I'm assuming they're game time decisions. Yes. Yeah, probably so... just doing it just so Oregon's like, okay, are these guys playing or not? Yeah, I think this is a big game for Dan Lanning and Oregon. Um, they're at home. I like Oregon. I'm gonna ride ride against you here. Sorry, I'm driving the opposite direction on this one. I like Oregon I mean, at the home. The way you went last week, I'm pretty good. So you're just gonna fade me? So I'm just. It looks like I'm two and zero this week right now. <laughs> okay, dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game number twenty two. Penn State heading game. to Auburn. Penn State minus three. Uh, the over under set at forty seven and a half. What's your read on this one, Case? I hate it. I hate it. I mean. Go- Auburn's quarterbacks absolutely suck. Yeah, did you see the stat I put in there? No, I So didn't. Auburn's QBs, TJ Finley and Robbie Ashford, this year combined <laughs> one touchdown with four interceptions. <laughs> That's not good, Bob. But you're also talking, can James Franklin and Sean Clifford win a big game? Yeah. You're going down. You're not had, You're not playing like a Big Ten school. I'm not, I'm not saying Auburn's like a great football team, but still – you're heading down south. You're heading to SEC territory. You're favored to win this game. They're probably going to be pissed off. Their fans are going to be rocking, most likely. Yeah. Because they think they can beat you. So, last and year... And Franklin can't win a big game. Last year, Penn State won this matchup 28-20. to uh, What I was reading about, and I know it's a year ago, but it sounded like uh, Auburn played almost like a flawless game. They kind of ran all over Penn State, but Sean Clifford was almost perfect in that game. The uh, game was also in Happy Valley. Right. It was in State College, yep. Um, Auburn has two legitimate running backs in Tank Bigsby and Jorquez Hunter, uh, but they have zero pass threat. So I think that Penn State's going to stack the box. I like Penn State in this one. Uh, over, under, I have no opinion on. All no right. opinion on I mean, I, I mean, I'm just going to ride with you, Penn State, minus three, just because if they win by three, it pushes. So yeah. I, I, Penn State minus three. Yeah, I think, I think you're right about the atmosphere. Auburn's going to be rocking. They're going to want to win. I just, dude – I, and especially losing to Penn State last year, you're gonna they're gonna want they're we're not going to zero two against you, right? Yeah, because this is a this is like a statement game for them, especially if like the whole who is a dominant conference SEC Big Ten SEC Big Ten. If the Penn State wins, it's like oh okay, it's, I mean I get it. it's like Auburn and Penn State, it's not Bama, it's not Georgia because I think there's a huge difference between Bama and Georgia. And any other team in the SEC, right? I agree. But uh, it's still like it's still that whole thing. What's a better football conference, Big Ten or SEC? Yeah, I don't know. Penn State minus three. I, I yeah, I, I like Penn State minus three. I just I I don't like bad teams with bad quarterbacks. You know what I mean? And they have two of them. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? Good one. I love uh, this next Mississippi game. State heading to love LSU. It. Love this next game for one. Fuck you, Brian Kelly. You're a piece of shit. You destroyed two football programs, LSU and Notre Dame. <laughs> um, I'm taking Mississippi State minus two and a half. Yeah, so it's Mississippi State minus two and a half over under 53. Uh, Mississippi State's air raid offense is already on fire this year. Their quarterback, Will Rogers, has 763 yards and nine touchdowns versus Memphis and Arizona this year. Uh, I I think it'll be close to start. I just think uh, Mississippi State's offense is going to just boat race them. I, I don't. I don't think LSU has the offense to keep up in this game. And you're talking two and a half. I'm just got to win by a field goal. Yeah, just got to win by a field goal. That's right. all we need, boys. So I'll, goal, yeah, I'll goal, take field goal. I'll take Mississippi State minus two and a half, even though they're going to Happy Valley. Um, is that happen? Death Valley. Death Valley. Sorry. Why do I call it Happy Valley? 
Isn't Penn State Happy Valley? Well, which one? What's? I mean, I know they're state. Penn State college. is Happy Valley, but and we just talked about that. So yeah, I just must have mixed it up. My bad. I also can't get comfy over here for some reason. You're in the same spot every. Fucking I know. Time. I just, I just can't. That fan's making me chilly. Better than being hot, though. Dude, last last <laughs> episode. Oh man, Casey. If you wonder why Casey's in shorts and chilling this week, it's because last week we got dope. <laughs> He looked like he got out of a sauna. You were, you were, you I were... was sweating. <laughs> I was sweating the entire time. It was bad. Uh, it was bad. But next was... Uh, game, I like this game too. Twenty three Pittsburgh heading to Western Michigan. Pittsburgh's favorited uh, minus ten and a half. Over under set at forty seven and a half. Um, Western he... beat them last year at Pitt. That's something to keep in mind. And another thing to keep in mind is you don't know if Pitt's quarterback is playing. Yeah, so he suffered an injury late in the first half last both week. Both of them did. Yeah, don't know if both. I mean, I, one of them, the one you really don't know about, the one that got the hurt. Slovis. The, slow to, slow Slo- this. Yeah. The one that he got hurt in the first quarter last week. The other one got hurt in the fourth quarter. He still played. But we're, we don't know how he, banged he was, up he, he is. He was limping the entire time. Yeah. Um, w, Western Michigan also has two really good running backs, Sean Taylor and Ladarius Jefferson. Probably best in the MAC. Lou Nichols the third's better. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> this this is gonna be surprising, but I got I got Western minus ten and a half. I think they win this. Or plus ten and a half. Sorry, plus ten and a half. Yeah, I I think if Slovis does if Slovis plays, I'm assuming he's not right now. That's what I'm basing my pick on. Uh, after they took him out of the game against Tennessee, their offense looked impotent. They could not move the ball. Um, if that's the case here, I think I think Western controls time of possession with those running backs, and I like Western at home to win this in an upset. Yeah, I think it definitely depends on if Slovis plays or not. If Slovis yeah. plays, I'm taking Pitt minus ten and a half. This will be a game time decision thing for me. So I mean, don't I would wait until the, yeah, right I, before the game and then make your decision. Slovis playing? Is he not? If he's playing, Pitt minus ten and a half. If he's not, definitely Western plus ten and a half. And you yeah. can possibly, if you want to, play the Western plus ten and a half. Then take a portion of that bet, like maybe half of that bet. And put it on Western money line, just so if you lose to Western money line, you still you pretty much even out with the Western plus and a half bet. Yeah. And if you win, if Western wins, you get the little sugar on top. Yeah, I like that. And that's some good by, advice for the for the listeners. Yeah, and if they lose by more than two, more than 10, 11, I'm sorry. Also, uh, shout out Nathan Campbell, just one of our loyal listeners. Yeah, shout out Nathan Campbell. Shout out Danny Cyber. Yeah. Let's go. They're riding. Love both of you guys. AWLs. We can't steal that. What? We can't call them AWLs. Award winning listeners. I mean, that's okay. PMT's thing. What the fuck, ever. Thank you for listening. Yeah, we'll, we'll find we'll find our own our own tag for just, you guys. I, I just assumed that was a Nate thing. I don't think we could steal that. That's probably like trademarked. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> it's we're okay. Trademarked. We are we're big PMT guys, but so are they. It's fine. Uh, next this game, game Nevada. <laughs> this game is stupid. The only reason why we threw it on is because of the spread. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Nevada at Iowa. Iowa minus 23 over under at 39. Okay, well, have they even scored 20 points this year? In all their games, no. This is I don't know how they think Iowa's going to win by 23. I, mean, I know Nevada is horrible unless they're like just expecting – 14 of their 23 points that they're going to win by is going to be on special teams on or special teams or on turnovers and them just like getting a pick six or a fumble recovery and all that. I mean, I'm just going to go Nevada plus 23 and I'm going under. Uh, I'm going under and I like Iowa both game until Iowa goes over. Yeah, I, I like both those bets. I always got to prove it, man. I mean, I, I, I was on like the list of fuck you. Because I rode with them hard last week and they disappointed me. I had faith in them and you know okay, what? Okay, no, 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 no. Let's bat. Let's let's reel it back in, buddy. Let's reel you back in. You you're going way off fucking course right now. Are you serious right now? You picking Iowa minus three and a half? Okay, I get that bet. Right. But you saying that game is going over and Iowa is going to score forty by themselves? I thought they were going to bounce back. Bounce back from what? I thought from their bounce previous from game. What? From their previous game, I thought they were gonna. I thought they. You know I, the reason why they scored like up to forty points last year is because of their defense. Okay. There is no way their defense is that good this year, and they're gonna do that. Their offense is horrible. I was proven wrong. I understand that, and that's why I'm off Iowa rest of the year. 
I, I was wrong. I'm, I'm man enough to admit it. I was totally wrong. Yeah, you were 100% wrong. I was. I like, was. You were so wrong that, like, if you look up wrong in the dictionary, that bat is in the, is that description. I was going to put 40 up against Iowa State. Fuck. Who the fuck is this guy? I'm Casey fucking McEwen. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shit, people don't even know my real name. Cut that out. <laughs> I'm gonna, Cut I'll, that I'll out. bleed that You're out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, next game this should be a fun one uh, another prime like game Texas A&M just making headlines uh, number 13 Miami uh, traveling to number 24 Texas A&M A&M's uh, favorite at minus 6 over under at 44 and a half it's probably the biggest game of the week this is definitely the biggest game of the week I mean I Tyler Van Dyke Miami's quarterback is playing amazing yeah he yeah even like the last six games of last season too he's he seems to have it figured out i mean is miami back i think miami's back i and i hate to say that it's i know it's cristobal mario cristobal's first year there and it does seem a lot to ask them to like you know are they ready to make this step are they ready to go into college station and upset and actually like texas a&m coming off that loss to app state like they're gonna come out Piss they off. they have to because I mean I mean especially for Jimbo Fisher. Oh dude, have you seen their next couple games? A and M's. It's tough. Like if they lose this game, they think they play a neutral site game against Arkansas next week. Okay, they can lose three straight if they lose this game. Yeah, and I I was kind of going through the the message boards and the blogs today, uh, especially like down in College Station, down in Lubbock. No, it's not Lubbock. Uh, down in down in where A and M's at. And uh, it does seem like there is some stumblings or or rumblings, excuse me, rumblings that they're not very happy with Jimbo Fisher's performance thus far into his contract. Um, I think they have 56 composite four and five stars on that team. App State had one, and it was their quarterback. And they still lost the game. Well, didn't they have one of the best recruiting classes? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I'm looking at their schedule. If they lose this game, that they're going to be two and four to start off the year because they go – to play a neutral side game. I think that's at Jerry's World against Arkansas. Then they had two Mississippi State. I think they'll win that game. Okay. And then they go to Bama. Yeah, that's a tough. That's a tough that's a tough I, road. I mean, this is a must win for Texas A and M in my opinion. Yeah, I think that Jimbo's for sure on the hot seat if they lose this or I mean get blown out oh, especially. He doesn't he this he's fallen to like that Mark D'Antonio way when Right before he left and like retired, he, he just he didn't change his ways. He, yeah, he was like, okay, well, I mean, we won games in 2014 this way. Okay, well, it's 2000 what 20, 2019. It's totally different now. College football's changed. This Thursday night broadcast looks horrible. It keeps freezing. I wonder if Amazon's having like an overload or something. Like this too is many horrible, too many dude. people are trying to log in and watch it. Maybe I don't know. I mean, you have that's connected directly to your thing, so it's not the Wi-Fi. It's not the Wi-Fi. Yeah. it's hundred percent. I'm prime. prime. Yeah, I wonder if other people are having issues. Um, the what you just said about Fisher being stuck in his ways, it do, doesn't their offense look like it's just stuck from ten years ago too? Yeah, it, it's, it's, like, there's it's zero like create. Win- it's like Jameis Winston is quarterback. Would be yeah, quarterback I just almost. I don't know, man. I'll be honest. I want I I think Miami pulls this off. I think Miami pulls this off. See, that's what my guts tell and me. I'll take the over too because I think I think it if so it's gonna be one of those those games where it's gonna be it could be like 30 to 35 28 or something like, there's like a that. reason why that number is at 44 and a half there is a reason they, they think that's gonna be a low scoring game just because I mean Texas A&M think about it they didn't do they didn't come out at all against App State App State they put up 14 against them in their first game of the year I don't know who they played but they only put up 31 yeah I could see this game going under. Okay. Yeah, you like I mean, the that, under? A, I, I'm not betting the under. I'm not touching the under. You say if you were, though. If you... I were, I mean, the under's the, I mean, it's just had a great number. I mean, see, my gut's telling me Miami minus seven, but it's like I have something. like It's like, you know how you have this? The, like, you got it at seven? Like, huh? It's at seven? I thought it was at six. Six. It's at six. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, it's like you have a person on your right shoulder and a person on your left shoulder. You got this person saying... Miami minus seven. Go with your gut. Then this person saying Texas A and M. See, I just stripped the football. Texas A and M. Go Texas A and M. You know what I'm doing? What are you doing, Case? Let me let me put in the calculations in my head. 
Miami minus six. I love it. Miami minus six. I love it. Talking football. Miami minus six. Sorry. Bill you, carried away. You put that up there. You're you're distracting yourself. I am distracting myself. Um, next game, a local one. Uh, high school, high school, college, UConn heading to Ann Arbor and playing number four, Michigan. This is Michigan's third cakewalk of the year. Michigan, 48 points over under at 60 for one. Fuck Michigan and their minus th- things because they should have covered last week and Cade blew it. Cade, you blew a easy. minus 51 and a half. I'm going to relax. He's just a kid. He's just relax. A kid. Just a kid. I'm not touching this game. What'd you promise, Danny? I'm not. I'm not doing any Michigan slander. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not touching this game just because. I mean, my. I'm. You would assume Michigan's going to beat them by more than 48. You think they can win by seven touchdowns, but they didn't do it last week when they should have. I'm not touching this game. But there's more. To, more to talk about. On yeah. So I have a few football. things I put on the sheet, and I just want your opinion on it. Um, we know JJ McCarthy's going to start, but how long do you think he plays? One quarter because UConn sucks. I know, but like, do you think that they'll, they'll because it's their last their last chance to really install their offense before Big Ten play? He'll play more. I mean, they don't play anyone until Penn State. Well, Maryland. I mean, that's they're gonna have to score against Maryland. Maryland can score. I think Michigan's defense is good, good enough to stop. Them. Um, Jim Moore, the coach uh, for Connecticut, former UCLA coach, pretty much called Michigan a perfect team with no holes whatsoever. Is this reverse psychology? Is he trying to let like have Michigan look like, past them? You're like, oh, this team just thinks that we're perfect and we're gonna kick the shit. And out so of they're them. already like, uh, the game's over. We already won it. I, you know what? If that's the case, no matter, Michigan, okay. Even if that's the case, okay. What Michigan wins by thirty five? Well, that, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say if that's the case, and it does, it'll last for about half a quarter. Penn State or sorry, Connecticut will score like ten points, and it'll be like ten seven, and people are like, oh, then Michigan will go score thirty five straight. You know what I mean? Uh, another thing, uh, does Cade get booed, or will fans receive him a little better after being called out by the media for booing him last week? I he'll bet- get booed. No, I think Michigan fans will boo him. I think that he gets. It depends on how he does. No, I think that he's gonna come out and he's gonna get like a standing ovation. I think fans are just going to, like, go over the top. Oh, yeah, like, like, we fucking love you, Cade. It's, like, over the top. All Everyone's standing in the big house clapping for Cade, making him feel welcome. Um, and I have a little bit of a beef. So, last week uh, on Saturday, we I started here watching the Michigan game with you. It was over before I left, and I went um, to meet up with some other friends. And so we ended up at, at a local bar right, right by where I live, Aubrey's, Aubrey's Pizzeria. Show up. They don't have the Big Ten Network. How? 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 How can you be a local place? Fifteen how minutes. How can you be in Big Ten territory and not have the Big Ten Network? Yeah. I call wait, it- wait, wait. Doesn't that come with every like basic thing? I, you, you one, one would think, Casey. Uh, wait, I bet- like, okay. Is it the Big Ten Network? Because I think the Michigan game was not on like the Big Ten Network. You know how they have like the Big Ten Big Ten Network, and they have like three options for it usually i think they were just on the big 10 network i'm pretty sure because i pulled it up on my phone and was able to watch i know so was i but there was also two games on the big 10 network that well but regardless they didn't have it um and uh so i you know i i I frequent there i have been i've been going to that same restaurant since i was since they were there you know what i mean my parents used to always go there um, and now that I'm an adult, I, I typically go there. So I, I called out one of the managers that I know and politely said this should be fixed. I felt horrible for the bartender. You know, she's working um, the Michigan game, probably expected to make a ton of money. I think four to six people walked in while I was there, looked up at the TVs, and then said, we're just going to go to beat ups. I mean, the game's going to be on there. I mean, it's, yeah. you cannot be in Michigan and not have either the Michigan or Michigan State game on it while they're on. Yeah, I, you I agree. have to play every single game. I've been told it was ordered on Monday, the Big Ten Network. So you hope, have to. Yeah. Uh, last thing for this game, does Michigan have a legitimate Heisman contender yes. with J.J. McCarthy? Yes. Look what they did with Aiden Hutchinson last year. I just if think their schedule. A guy like, it's, well, yes, their schedule is very favorable to For him have, to put up big numbers. To put up two to three touchdowns a game, put up huge numbers. Not a lot of picks. Wise, not a lot of picks. And just think about it, just the Michigan fans, they got Aiden Hutchinson to 
the 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 final the final but he went to New York last yeah, year. Yeah, 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 you're right. And in my opinion there was a better defensive player that possibly could have went to it. There was other players that possibly could have went to it instead of him. Yeah. But Michigan has such a huge fan base. Now you bring in a quarterback like JJ. Honestly, I bet today JJ to win the Heisman plus well, 2500 odds. That was how are the odds? 25. So I think with the way he can get it get it done with his feet and his arm and See, no Michigan slander, just saying. I, I bet a Michigan guy to win the Heisman. Just saying. I I just think like I was looking at it when we were adding stuff. I you're being so facetious right now. I mean, you said no Michigan slander. I'm just saying. I did not say any Michigan slander. I said a lot of good things about a Michigan quarterback. I just think like like we're just saying like how easy their schedule is. It could like JJ could go into like some of the hard games it's like he's gonna maybe have one or two interceptions and a ton of touchdowns and like you said the media the michigan media hype train is going to be pushing that i mean the real really thing about him is his at his like first we'll say test is at home against penn state then you have a bye week then you have another test against michigan state at home yeah so it's like you, you can easily help yourself out and all of a sudden Get yourself ready for these bigger games because you have a lot of these home. I mean, the only thing that's going to suck is possibly your head. Then you're heading to a hostile environment in Columbus. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I hope that'll be the only thing that could hurt him. Is not, you have all these? If he, if even if they don't win and he plays well in that game and he's played well all year, it'll still help his chances. If it's not his fault, they lose. You know what I mean? If, if oh yeah, no, I see. I see, so, what you mean. I see what you mean. Um. Let's get to our last game that we're going to discuss in the college slate. Number 11, Michigan State heading to Washington. Casey Spartans, how are you feeling? Reverse line movement. Michigan State started out as, I think, three-point favorites. Yeah, but now it's... Now it's Washington three and a half. I mean, I think they know, think Vegas knows something. Jaden Reed is questionable for the game. Last week, he got shoved into the bench, hurt his back. He has... Has a back injury right now. Mel Tucker, Mel Tucker earlier this week just kind of brushed off when people ask questions if he's playing or not. Who knows if he's playing? He is heading to Washington with the team, but I think that is possibly more of a it's a hocus pocus. Hocus pocus. We Washington has to think if Jaden Reed's playing. You don't know, so you have to play plan for him. Reed's also like a probably a top fifteen receiver in the country, 100%. if not better. So yeah. it's like it's. I mean, smart move by Tucker. I don't think Jaden Reed's playing, and I think that is going to make a huge difference because Peyton Thorne is a horrible quarterback. Jaden Reed is his guy. His percentage drops dramatically when Jaden Reed is not on the field. I'm going Washington minus three and a half in this game. It sucks for me to say that. I really, I'm going to be real. Oh, give me a second. Let me see if I can change your mind a little bit. Couple, couple tidbits here. Oh yeah, no. I, so MSU's running running back a room has looked really good, replacing Kenneth Walker the third K nine. They got uh, Jalen Berger, the Wisconsin transfer, and Jarek Broussard, who I think is a Colorado transfer. They've looked great in the backfield, um, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to change your mind on this one because I think with Reed being out, you're right. Uh, and also, I mean, the, 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 this is the only stat that like might change my mind. Okay, the last time Washington has won against a ranked opponent, like a non-conference ranked opponent at home, guess what year that was? 2001? 2001. I only knew that because it's on the sheet. (laughs) I wouldn't have guessed. That's forever ago. Yeah, that is a while ago. So it's like, okay, Washington sucks at home against non-conference teams that are ranked, and Michigan State's ranked 11th. But... I also think okay if okay this is this is what I'm gonna say. Jaden Reed plays Michigan State money line. Michigan State pot. Michigan State plus three. Then throw a little sugar on top. Michigan State money line. Jaden Reed doesn't play. Hammer Hawaii minus three and a half. I don't see Hawaii. Him. Washington. Sorry. Well, another thing that that I kind of like uh, helping Washington here uh, is the fact that state obviously travel traveling across the country. That always seems to mess up Big Ten teams whenever they travel to the West Coast to play the Pac-12 or whatever. Pac-10, Pac-8. Uh, uh, <laughs> Washington's quarterback, he's a transfer from Indiana. His name's Michael Penix. Um, he's off to a really good start despite playing lackluster opponents. He's got 574 yards uh, and 571 yards and 48.5 points per game. Um, 
I don't know, man. I I do agree. I think I think I like Washington if uh, if Jalen Reed doesn't play. I like that. Yeah, no, it, yeah just check check it Saturday morning. See what's up. Yeah, I, I would wait, wait until game time. If Reed is playing, play Michigan State. If he's not, I would go with Washington in this one. I just don't see Peyton Thorne hating his targets. I get Michigan State can run the ball, but you, I mean, it, you have the pass the ball. The Thorne's game. been Thorne sucks. Horrible, horrible this year. He's been horrible. So, despite the outcome of this game, does this game set State up better for the rest of the year? I think you're going to learn a lot about Michigan State this year. Or not this, this year, this game. Okay, so yeah. You're so you learn say... a lot about them, about their – because, like, I mean, they always come out slow their first game, and then they came out and rolled Akron last week. I think this is a, this is kind of a true test. You're heading to – you're heading out west. You're playing Washington. I get Washington's not that good of a team. You guys should easily beat Washington, in my opinion. Right. One of your top players are going to be out. We'll see how the rest of the team looks. I think this is a statement game for Michigan State. I, I think it's going to say a lot about Mel Tucker, too. Can he get can he get them ready, you know, especially traveling like that? So we'll see. We'll keep our eye on that. Like I said, that's a local interest here. Um, so we'll see. 